and what is up, gang? Thank you for checking out Sledgehammer TV tonight. The entire McMahon family came out to start tonight's Monday Night Raw with grandiose promises of change. A new era, so to speak, of Monday Night Raw. And then Vince McMahon turns around for the greater part of three hours and says, Hey, fans, go Fuck yourself. This is my show. You ain't the authority, and we are going to bring the hammer down on this bullshit change shakeup of absolutely nothing right here and right now. My name is Nick Nightmare, and you are watching the Monday Night Raw review right here on the Sledgehammer Wrestling Show, only on Sledgehammer TV. <laughs> Let's do it. <laughs> All right, wrestling fans, thank you so much once again for joining me. This was an absolute joke. This was... I laughed so much tonight, and this isn't a comedy. We know I don't like comedy in my wrestling. Why am I laughing all night long through this show? Because Vince McMahon is an evil genius. And Vince McMahon knows that when he shows up, people tune in to watch. And he used tonight as nothing more than a promotional stunt to get everybody to watch. You know how I know this? Because I'm, I'm not an idiot. I didn't expect him to come out here tonight and to rectify all the wrongs in just a 24-hour period coming off of the heels of the TLC pay-per-view last night. I didn't expect any change at all, but what I did expect was them to do something Something, something needed to happen. I was expecting Vince McMahon to show up and publicly fire Baron Corbin. I thought that was going to be his reason for being there. But then he wants to bring out Stephanie and Triple H and Shane. A foursome of failure when it pertains to the main roster at the very least. And they want to come out and promise you guys change. They want to tell you that no more are we going to suffocate our superstars. We are going to listen to the fans. We are going to give you what you want to see. Triple H wants to go out there and offer me no more absentee management. Hey, how about you offer me no more absentee champions? That I would be all for. I don't give a shit if I ever see anybody in management ever again on a Monday Night Raw for the rest of my life, no matter how long it might be. We do not watch Monday Night Raw for management. We're not trying to brush up on our management skills, taking notes from Triple H and Stephanie and whatever they're doing on Monday Night Raw. We're tuning in to watch wrestling. Change! We're going to make all the changes you need. You are now the authority. I'm the authority, you say? I, along with millions of the WWE Universe, we are the authority, you say? We're going to listen to you, you say. The change begins, and Stephanie says, and it starts tonight. And what changed? What was the change? Tonight's change, was it Tyler Breeze? Was it the appearance of the Prince Pretty on Monday Night Raw? You know something? If you watch NXT, you would have seen Tyler Breeze show up last week and have an absolutely amazing match with Ricochet. It was a star-making match. If you've never seen Tyler Breeze before, which there's a good chance many of you guys haven't if you don't watch the WWE over the last couple of years, or even if you have, he's barely been on TV. He's barely been on the ring. You don't know what Tyler Breeze can do. If you watched him on NXT and then you watch this match with Dean Ambrose tonight, it's almost like a completely different guy. Tyler Breeze on Monday Night Raw was stifled. There was no way he was allowed to make Dean Ambrose look bad. He went out there on Monday Night Raw to give you the illusion that we're getting fresh faces, fresh storylines, and all these bullshit promises. And what happens? Tyler Breeze loses in a very unimpressive manner, just a very straightforward loss to Dean Ambrose. Do you know what else was wrong with this whole segment? Dean Ambrose and his little soldiers of waste. 
right? Soldiers of the Wasteland. We're all vile, decrepit filth. They're all still coming out in the gas mask. Why is he coming out with a group of fucking guys anyway? He's coming out there. He wants to address Seth Rollins. The one thing I didn't want him to do. He's calling out Seth Rollins. He wants to fight Seth Rollins some more. I wanted him to move away from Seth Rollins. He wanted to be like, all right, I'm out here. I'm in my fuzzy coat, necked jacket, right? I got my, my furry collar so I feel like a wild dog. I look like Bane. And I want to fight Seth Rollins. That's not what I wanted to see. I wanted to see him say, I'm done with you. You're, you're a piece of trash. I'm done. Don't even look at me, Seth Rollins. I don't want to see your King Slayer face. But what does the WWE do to Seth Rollins tonight? They made him look like a fucking asshole. Seth Rollins is hiding in plain sight underneath one of the masks of Dean Ambrose's stupid troop. Right? The stupid troopers. Coming down the ring with Dean Ambrose. Seth Rollins was one of them. If you were following me on Twitter, you know I called this right from the beginning of the match as soon as I seen it. Dean Ambrose, during his whole entire promo, sitting there calling out Seth Rollins, talking down Seth Rollins, issues an open challenge for the Intercontinental Championship, which is then answered by Tyler Breeze. And the whole time, Seth Rollins is standing outside. Why would you let somebody else jump in your spot? If you truly gave a shit about the Intercontinental Championship and you wanted it back as much as you claim, why wouldn't you have taken that spot, jumped him from behind in your stupid fucking gas mask, and then take your title? back or attempt to take your title back that would have been a little bit more exciting maybe I don't know because I don't even want to see them next to each other anymore Tyler Breeze only got wasted in this segment Seth Rollins was made to look like an idiot and I can't stand this new germaphobe Dean Ambrose he's boring he's stale he's coming off like a generic heel and he has lost my interest completely Another guy that I had high hopes on his return to Monday Night Raw, only to have them fizzled out. Change has come, everybody. What fucking change? Do you realize that tonight's Monday Night Raw, this new era, the first episode of the new Fuck You Fans regime, ends with Natalia as the headline act on Monday Night Raw. Natalia, who did not only beat Ember Moon, did not only beat Ruby Riot, but also beat Sasha fucking Banks tonight to get a shot at Ronda Rousey on next week's stupid Christmas Eve episode of Monday Night Raw. Are you fucking kidding me? You cannot clearly more paint by numbers this situation. Oh, Natalia's papa passed away. What what can we do as a company to help the Queen of Hearts get over her father's passing? Let's give her a sympathy push right to the top. We're not going to give her the championship, but we'll give her a good match. We'll make her the star. We'll make her have all this stuff. Who gives a shit about Natalia? This is the same Natalia that all year long has done absolutely fucking nothing. With the exception of being the woman to introduce Ronda Rousey to the women's division, what has Natalia done of note all year? Nothing. But we are ending we are ending the month of December with Natalia going up against Ronda Rousey. This match should have happened months ago. This should have been Rousey's first program. And now we're going to have two best buds, best friends battling over the championship. Do you give a shit about stuff like that? Because I certainly don't. Oh, who's the better woman? (laughs) Fuck you. Fuck you. How dare you put this... I'm trying to to come up with a non-offensive phrase, so we're just going to have to go past it, because everything that's going to come out of my mouth right now is going to make all you sexist people go nuts on me. So we're not going to go down that route. We're going to give Natalia the win over people there that should be being put over Natalia right now. Natalia's at that stage in her career where she's supposed to be making other people stars. Natalia is already a star, quote-unquote, thanks to her family lineage. If Natalia wasn't part of the Hart family, I doubt she'd even be around. It's it's a slap in the face. You guys that watch me, you know one of the things that I cannot stand is being treated like an idiot. 
And this was probably the role that treated us most like idiots of the entire year. It's one thing to bore the shit out of me and give me a poor quality raw. It's another thing to come and promise me steak and then bring out a fucking White Castle hamburger. Oh, but you said you were going to give me steak. Oh, yeah. Well, we're going to get to the steak. You got to be patient, right? You're going to tell me, oh, it was just the first show. You know, they can't make all these changes. That's fine. You know what tonight should have been? If everything the McMahons at the beginning of this show came out was ch- and said, what they said, if they were true in their statement and if they meant anything that they said, tonight would not have been filled with promos for returning superstars sometime in the future. Very ambiguous. No dates, no times, just, oh, Kevin Owens will be coming back. Sami Zayn will be coming back. Oh, and by the way, we don't want to have any surprises or do anything cool with any of the NXT kids. We're just going to tell you that we're going to bring up Lars Sullivan. We're bringing up Heavy Machinery. We're bringing up Lacey Evans. We're bringing up all these other fucking people from NXT, and we're going to tell you all tonight. That's the fucking change. Where's the change? Do you know what you changed? You changed everybody's feelings about all these people coming up from NXT. Some people might be excited, sure. But this is pro wrestling. Why was Lars Sullivan not out there tonight on Monday Night Raw causing havoc? This was the night to do that. Tonight's episode should have echoed some remnants of a Raw after WrestleMania or the Raw after the Rumble. It should have had something special. You promised it starts tonight, so where was the surprises? Where was something new? Where was something different? Everything was the fucking same. Nothing changed. You look right down to the beginning, all the way to the end. That whole opening segment was a giant hypocritical piece of work. They're sitting there telling you that they're going to give you a all new Raw. We're going to change Raw for the better in a 20 fucking minute long opening segment that was so long we had to have a commercial break in between. All to get Baron Corbin more fucking heat? To let Baron Corbin play with the crowd to a point where Vince McMahon was visibly starting to get annoyed with how long things were fucking taken and then told Triple H to take the fucking ball and run with this segment and let's wrap this thing up? Did you guys catch that? Because my eyes did. Vince McMahon leads over to his son-in-law, whispers a little sweet nothing in his ear. Next thing you know, Triple H took control of the whole segment. He was telling the crowd what Baron Corbin was trying to tell them because he couldn't get it across and he wanted to keep letting the crowd interrupt him. You're not supposed to let that kind of shit happen. Vince McMahon even went out of his way. He's like, hey, you know, you got a fucking mic, bro. You are louder than the crowd. Talk. Let's get this over with. And it only gets worse from there. How did we start this new regime? By giving you a rematch from last night. Rehashing a match from last night that the only thing interesting about it was seeing Braun Strowman in the sling. Because everything else was fucking generic and forced and it came across the same way tonight. We are going to offer you change, ladies and gentlemen. Here we go. We are going to have the first match of the night. It's going to be Baron Corbin. We're going to give you a chance to earn your general managership. We're going to give you that chance because that's what's fair, right? You want what's fair. So we'll get that if you could beat this man, right? Everybody's waiting with bated breath. Is it going to be Aleister Black? Is Lars Sullivan going to be the one to eliminate Baron Corbin? Were you all salivating at the thoughts of all the people that could possibly come out? Are the lights going to go out and are we going to get the return of Bray Wyatt? Who could it be? You suck. Are you fucking kidding me? New. Different matches, new superstars. Here's fucking Kurt Angle, everybody. Go fuck yourself. This is my show. That's what every segment on tonight told you. We come out, we're going to promise you change, but fuck you. It's my show. I'm going to do what I want. I'm going to give you an eight fucking woman gauntlet match, and we're going to give the win to Natalia because I don't like fucking Sasha Banks. I don't give a shit about Bailey, and the rest of the women's roster is a non entity. Nobody in that match was even worthy of having a fucking championship match outside of Ruby Riot or Sasha Banks. Sasha Banks is a multiple-time women's champion. She was taken off of the mantle years ago for no apparent reason and has been on the shit list for the longest time. Bailey, can, you can kind of say the same thing. I know there's a lot of people that aren't big on Bailey anymore. I know what the girl can do, and I wouldn't have been mad if Bailey would have won this opportunity. Sasha and Bailey make the most sense. 
Sasha and or Bailey make the most sense. Natty does not make sense. If it does not make sense, you must acquit. Right? Like Johnny Cochran says, if it don't fit, you must acquit. I wish, I wish Vince would fucking acquit. Totally. And fucking leave. Oh, I can't do this by myself anymore. I'm going to bring my three stooges along with me now. And they're just going to fucking do what I tell them to at the end of the day anyway. And nothing is going to change. So fuck you, fans. That's what I felt tonight. That's what was radiating off of Monday Night Raw tonight. Fatal Fall Way for the Tag Team Championship Opportunity. For what? For what? Where there's no more number one contendership, right? They've abolished the rematch clause because the authors of piss don't deserve a fucking rematch, apparently. I don't know why. And now they are put into this match with the Revival and the Lucha House Party and the fucking B-Team who's been missing in action since fucking Survivor Series and nobody gives a shit about. And then the Revival wins. Now the Revival can get a win. These guys have been embarrassed by the Lucha House Party for the last fucking three and a half to four weeks or however long it's been. They've been embarrassed even longer than that if you want to take their whole entire tenure on the main roster into consideration. What part of me wants to believe that they are World Tag Team Champions now? They're going to get a shot at Root and Gable. And if they win now, who cares? You've killed them. You've ruined them. The Revival are a shadow of what they used to be. I'm not interested anymore. Unfucking believable You know what should have happened during that Fatal 4-Way match? Heavy Machinery could have fucking debuted. Could have came out, laid waste to all four teams, end the match in a no contest, and then have another match for... The, non, the non-existent number one contendership or to decide who's going to be next to, fa- to chase to the fucking champion. I don't even understand it. I don't know how to describe it without calling it a number one contender. The next person to earn an opportunity at a shot at the champion is called a fucking number one contender. What else am I supposed to call it? Absolutely fucking ridiculous. This whole entire show was a farce. All this show did was spit right in your face, spit right in my face, and that's why this hammer is coming down as hard as it's ever come before, because there is nothing that makes me more mad than people lying to me straight to my face. Vince McMahon came out and lied to the entire world. Stephanie McMahon lied to the entire world. Don't tell me we have to sit back and wait. Don't tell me to fucking be patient. I have been patient with this piece of shit show for the last three years. We started this podcast two and a half fucking years ago and it's been the same song and dance every Monday night and now you want me to be fucking patient? You should have blew the roof off of this Monday Night Raw. You should have took this motherfucker and ran it into the end zone. You have the capability, you have the talent under your belt to do so, but you want to give me this shit. You want to show me Bobby Trashley's fucking ass again. We got to see the human fucking milk dud bending over and popping out his fucking glutes again. This is what the change is. What fucking change? Bobby Lashley still embroiled in a match with fucking Elias. They're going to keep going with this ridiculous feud. Who cares? Bobby Lashley is trash. He has lowered and reduced the stock of Leo Rush to fucking zero. I don't want to hear Leo Rush's voice. I don't want to see his face on Monday Night Raw because as soon as I do, it's hard for my brain to want to pay attention. Ziggler versus McIntyre. That's the direction in which we're going, but we got to make a pit stop and involve Finn Balor because we have nothing to fucking do with Finn Balor, so we're just going to keep sticking him in other people's feuds. Don't build him up on his own. Don't give him the fucking demon back. Why didn't we have the demon show up on fucking Raw tonight? What change? 
feel like a fucking homeless man. I spent, I said the word change so many times. I'm expecting you guys to start throwing quarters at your screen to try to give me some change to make me feel better since Vince McMahon made me feel like a broke-ass fucking loser just for being a wrestling fan tonight. Oh, you have no patience. Oh, why didn't you just turn off the show if you didn't like it? I explained all that to you. The time for patience is over. Action needs to be taken now. I don't give a shit what your long-term plan is for WrestleMania. If there's a real different way that you're going to go, then start to get there. And you were supposed to start to get there tonight. You want me to look forward to next week? What are we going to get next week? We're getting Elias and Bobby Lashley in a fucking Christmas tree street brawl. Change! Finn versus Ziggler versus McIntyre. Change! And Ronda Rousey versus fucking Natalia. This is the new directions on Raw. This show was a fucking piece of shit. And while the action on the night was pretty decent, when you wrap it up the way you wrapped it up and shove it down my throat when you're making me expect something different and then I get nothing... There is no choice left than but to come here and make sure that all of you guys understand what you just saw. What you've just seen. I'm sorry for using improper grammar, but that's how fucking annoyed I am. This was a joke. This was a clever maneuver by a fucking hateful old man who's not getting his way and is going to say all the right things and do absolutely nothing about it. That's my opening salvo. Let's run down this fucking card. I really don't care about, like I said, we're going to even skip talking about anything else that happened in that opening segment. It was 20 minutes of nothing. The McMahons standing around, fucking staring at each other. Oh, I'm married to you. Oh, you're my sister. There's my father-in-law. We're all standing here. While Constable Bald Dickhead Baron Corbin fumbles and bumbles with the microphone and wants to stare at the crowd. Let's... This was the opening segment. For 20 fucking minutes. Then you want to go into a four-on-one handicap match, right? Kurt Angle, Apollo Crews, and Rudin Gable defeating Baron Corbin, and this match took nine minutes. These guys took nine minutes to beat one man. And sure, they were having fun with him. They were using him at the end like a punching bag. They already got the win and then continued to beat down on the former general manager erect, right? And what was it for? Did it get rid of Baron Corbin? Did we get a na na hey hey goodbye? Did the man get fired? Did they do anything interesting? No. In fact, Baron Corbin will be back in another segment again later because we've changed everything. They announced Heath Slater as the referee to really put the odds over the edge for Baron Corbin so you knew there was no way he was going to win, nor did you care, nor did you want him to win. What did it matter? It did nothing. Then we had to watch a fucking five-minute thing for John Cena. A guy's not even barely part of the company anymore. Only comes to work when they're working overseas. Doesn't want to wrestle in the States anymore, apparently. He wants to become the new fucking Confucius over there in Asia with all his little proverbs and inspirational quotes he wants to put on Twitter all the time. And now we got to fucking see Mr. Robot doing his thing all over the world as the Good Samaritan. I don't want to see this shit, and I don't fucking care. I didn't want to see John Cena when he was actually wrestling. I don't want to fucking see what he's doing in his personal life, what fucking awards he's winning that have nothing to do with professional wrestling or Monday Night Raw. So how about you, sir, and all of your programmers and your producers go fuck yourself for wasting my time with things like this and wasting my time with things like Finn Balor versus Dolph Ziggler, which any fucking idiot could have told you Drew McIntyre was going to play a part in the finish of this match. Were you asleep last night? 
during their match on TLC. I almost fell asleep a couple of times, but I was awake to see Dolph Ziggler get involved and cost Drew McIntyre the match. What part of you as a wrestling fan, not being a stupid asshole, didn't know that Drew McIntyre was coming out during this match? And we have the same situation as last night at TLC, only in reverse. Nothing new. Nothing's changed. And now the three of these guys are going to battle it out next week. So next week, nothing will change again. You want me to be excited? I'm not. Fucking ridiculous. Finn Balor defeats Dolph Ziggler via disqualification. Nine minutes and 32 seconds. Dean Ambrose wants to come out. And do his Dean Ambrose thing. Talk about how we're filthy, disgusting germs. You are full of germs, you're vile. You're vile. Where's Seth Rollins, man? Where's Seth Rollins? I don't care. I don't give a shit about anything he says. And whenever Dean Ambrose comes on the screen now, all I gotta fucking hear is Corey Graves and Renee Young just fucking bickering like two fucking brothers and sisters, right? Like a couple of siblings. Oh, you didn't talk to your husband last night? What's wrong with you? It's none of your business. Why are you asking me about my marriage? Of course we had a celebration. He fucked my brains out. Is that what you want me to say on Monday night? What the fuck are we listening to? Focus on the match. What the fuck do we care what Renee Young and Dean Ambrose are doing in their real fucking life, which has nothing to do with WWE Raw because they never fucking acknowledge it. Have you ever seen them together on screen in a loving, romantic way? Not on Raw. We've seen it on SmackDown a little bit. Now, Dean Ambrose doesn't even look like he has a wife. It looks like he doesn't even give a shit that his wife is even there. So why are we pushing this issue? It's not part of the show. And it's distracting. And it makes me not like Dean Ambrose even more so. You should be showing me some respect. Why? Why? Because you want to use Roman's name to get heat? Because you want to wear Bane's jacket? Because you want to have some fucking idiots outside wearing ski masks or gas masks? That gains respect? A cheap win over Seth Rollins at fucking TLC? That gains your respect? Respect would be honing your craft, being a good heel, knowing what to do. Then you're going to start earning people's respect even as a villain. That's how wrestling works. To me, Dean Ambrose comes out, bathroom break. Even if it includes Seth Rollins. Tyler Breeze coming out and challenging this guy was great. This was something I could get behind. And like I told you guys at the open of the show, I got in the back of my mind his match with Ricochet from just last week. I'm like, whoa, we might see something interesting here. But what did we see? A very basic match, nothing special. And in seven minutes, Dean Ambrose did away with Prince Pretty to retain the Intercontinental Championship because change. How great would it have been if Tyler Breeze would have even just for one night, surprised the wrestling world and won the Intercontinental Championship from Dean Ambrose. You could have gave it back to him next week. You want to offer change? You want to shake things up? At least make me see something change. Force Brock fucking Lesnar to come to work. Maybe that could be the change. I still got to wait till the Royal Rumble to see the Universal Championship. But you're worried about absentee managers. Fucking ridiculous. Let's scroll down my notes here. Get to the next segment. Backstage, Shane McMahon was talking about all the new faces and the new opportunities that are going to be given to these new faces. But there's going to be difficult decisions. What difficult decisions? What difficult decisions? Is it that hard for you to evaluate your roster, listen to the crowd reaction, and place your pieces in the game accordingly? So that when you play the game, it doesn't become a confusing mess. Use strategy. Plan things out. See who has chemistry. See who the fans are buzzing for. 
Sacramento tonight, the fans were buzzing for nobody. These idiots out there in Sacramento gave more of a fucking reaction to Vince McMahon than they gave to the rest of the fucking roster on the whole entirety of the night, and you are stupid as shit for doing so. I wish to God that tonight's show took place here in my fucking hometown of New York City where we have some fucking balls. Where we're not afraid of guys like fucking Vince McMahon. And when he would have walked out swaggering his fucking boss walk and his stupid song playing, everybody would have been booing his ass out the building. They wouldn't have gave him a minute to fucking speak. He would have been Baron Corbin trying to talk and looking, trying to talk and looking, losing control of the crowd. Because he's the one at fault. He's the one to blame. And we know it. But you guys in Sacramento, you hear no chance. And you start fucking singing along. Sheep. Sheep. Every one of you in that arena. All of you cheering for Natalia at the end of that thing. What, are you all personal friends of Jim the Anvil? You needed to see her fucking gain some sort of a triumph in her dark days? Instead of doing what's right and making it Sasha or Bailey so that you could progress the storyline of the four horsewomen in a proper and interesting manner? No. Charlotte and Becky are on the other show. You could have easily solved that by having their two fellow horsewomen be the ones to step up to Ronda Rousey after what they did, what she did to her friends last night. How could you do that to Charlotte? How could you do that to Becky? Those are our girls. Now we're gunning for you, Rousey. And then you bring up Jessamine Duke. You bring up Shayna Baszler. You bring everybody fucking up. And now everything is set up perfectly for a collision somewhere down the line. Whether it be a couple of one-on-one matches. You got Baszler versus Becky. You got Ronda versus Charlotte. And then you could do Duke and, and, the, and Shafir versus Sasha and Bailey. All on one fucking card. Four horsewomen. And then you do the four on four, you blow it off, and it'll be great. But instead, you want to push fucking Natalia to the top of the list. Talk about a fucking agenda. Absolutely ridiculous. They aired the video package for the incoming NXT class. Lars Sullivan, Lacey Evans, Heavy Machinery, Nikki Cross, and EC3. I have a huge problem with this. I do not like the fact that they've announced all of these people coming. This, again, is a clever maneuver by Vince McMahon just to get you guys to keep tuning in week after week. If you're excited for an EC3 or if you're a fan of Heavy Machinery or you like Lars Sullivan, you're going to be waiting for them to show up. So every week, oh, they promised they're coming. So now every week you're going to come back to the show and wait and they're going to continue to fucking disappoint you. And what do you think is going to happen? With the exception of Lars Sullivan, who fits the the McMahon mold for success and might be skyrocketed right to the top just based off of his look alone and the fact that he's being endorsed by Brock Lesnar and Brock Lesnar wants a match with Lars Sullivan somewhere in the future in the WWE. He's the only one coming up here that I see having a chance. Everybody else, Lacey Evans, the lady of NXT, she is nowhere near ready to be on the main roster. She's had a couple of decent matches, but she still needs a little bit of work. Why can't she get a run with the NXT Women's Championship? Make her a little bit more viable. Make her a little bit more deadly. Make people more aware of her before you just bring her to Monday Night Raw so everybody can go, who the fuck is this broad dressed like she's from back in the fucking 1940s? I dig Lacey Evans. I like everything about her. She's a talented girl. It's like Charlotte 2.0. Very similar to me to Charlotte. More so than a Rhea Ripley, if you ask me. But what's she going to do? She's going to be wasted. Just like they wasted Asuka. They brought Asuka up from NXT. Asuka was a a bar of gold that they let rust to shit. What do you think they're going to do with a nice little dime piece like Lacey Evans? I have a strong feeling that Vince McMahon is only bringing her up because he has a 72-year-old hard-on for this girl. Maybe he finds her attractive. You know how he used to dig Stacey Keebler. Maybe he likes long-legged blondes. Maybe he's done with Alexa Bliss. He needs a new blonde to sit on his fucking lap and tell him he's the smartest man in the room. Lacey Evans may have a chance if that's the case. Because you know Vince will take the people he likes and push them to the moon. 
Other than that, the girl is doomed. She's doomed to fail before she's even stepped foot on the main roster. Heavy Machinery is going to be this generation's version of the Ascension. Because if you can't get it right with the Authors of Pain, what makes you think they're going to get it right with Heavy Fucking Machinery? What are they going to end up calling them? Fat Mechanics? They're going to change the name because they can't be Heavy Machinery. What are they going to be? Overweight Tractors? They're going to find some clever other way to call them Heavy Machinery? Not time for them. I love those guys. Tucker Knight and uh, Otis Dozovich. I forget how to pronounce his name. They're fucking great. They're a great tag team, and we need tag teams to fill out a division, but this is one team. This is one team you're teasing coming. Where are they going? SmackDown? Are they going to Raw? Are we going to start to see the Authors of Piss versus the Overweight Tractor Trailers? I don't know. I don't think they're going to do them any good. Look at the tag teams from NXT, look at the track record, and then have faith that Heavy Machinery is going to be a big thing in 2019. I don't think so. Nikki Cross already made her main roster debut months ago, and then we forgot about it. Play with Nikki, Becky. Remember? I fucking remember. I loved it. I thought it was going to be great. And then she fucking disappeared. And now you're teasing her coming back. I have hope for Nikki Cross. Hopefully she goes to SmackDown Live. Hopefully she's put with Sanity so that we can see maybe some guys from Sanity back on TV once in a while. And Nikki Cross versus Becky Lynch, that's money. That's a money match. Nikki Cross versus Asuka, you know that's money because we've seen it already. NXT, these girls almost killed each other in a Last Woman Standing match and it was great. Why wouldn't you want to go back to that? Revisit it again. That's the type of shit we're looking for. Not Natty winning a fucking gauntlet match beating four of the best females in the world. Or three, rather. Unfucking believable And EC3, Ethan Carter III, also known as Derek Bateman. I loved <laughs> EC3 in Impact Wrestling. His connection to Dixie Carter always made me laugh. I think he's... A very, very big superstar in the making. However, I don't feel like he had his due with his run in NXT. I think he has a lot more to do down there. Guy hasn't even been North American champion. Why does the main roster have any reason to give a shit about EC3 unless they used to watch TNA? And the crossover between those fans is minimal at best. What he did in TNA is about two, three years old already. See him on Twitter tonight calling out guys like Drake Maverick. Because they used to run together in TNA when he was Rockstar Spud. I don't want to see that shit again. I don't give a fuck about any of that. I don't think this fan base that goes to the shows, to the WWE Raw events and the pay-per-views, give a shit about EC3. If they didn't care about the glorious Bobby Roode, a former NXT champion, what makes you think the crowd's going to react to an EC3? The top 1%? 1% of what? He's going. If he's successful, he will be in the top 1% of people from NXT that had successful careers. But I don't expect that to be the case. I don't think the fans are going to give two shits when EC3 shows up on the main roster. I think he's going to come out to crickets. He might get a good pop if they're in the right city, but it's going to fall away fast. Just like Elias. Just like Bobby Roode. And everybody else. Shinsuke Nakamura couldn't get it done. You think EC3 is going to be a big superstar? Had a little conversation with Kevin Castle tonight on Twitter. If you guys know KC. Big name here in the podcast world. I happen to work for Don Tony's brother. Right? My job is owned by the family of Don Tony. And his partner is Kevin Castle. I was talking to him tonight. This guy, Kevin Castle... As much as I respect him and love the guy, this guy thinks EC3 is going to be the heavyweight champion or the universal champion by the time we hit SummerSlam this year. I can only hope to God that he's right, but I cannot see that happening. And sorry, Big Kev, I think you are a little bit delusional there, bro. Maybe you had a a shot or two tonight too many. I don't know, maybe you ate a slice of pizza too many and you weren't feeling right when you made this statement. But I will be more than happy to eat my words if you end up being correctly, as I did tell you myself on Twitter. I don't agree with it. I don't like the way they announced everybody coming. 
It takes all the surprise away, takes all the intrigue away, and now we're all just going to sit here waiting. And then when they come up and they don't do what we want them to do, we're just going to forget all about them. Just like we have every other person that's come before them. Leo Rush and Bobby Lashley, oh, it's time to show that ass. Everybody show your ass. Come on, Bobby, show your ass. I fucking hate it. I hope that that mountain of milk duds decides to leave sooner than later. Or at least take him off TV, because the man is just dreadful. He is destroying Leo Rush. He's got Elias suck in this black hole of nothing. And I want to see it go away. I won't see it go away because I'm sure Vince McMahon loves him some milk duds. Because he eats this shit up. Bobby Lashley shows us his milk dud fucking glutes and then gets attacked by Elias. And I don't care. Change! What fucking change? They aired a video for the return of Sami Zayn. Once again, instead of having the guy come out and insert himself into a feud of some sort or get a measure of vengeance against somebody who injured him on his way out, we are just telling everybody, hey, guess what? Sami Zayn's coming back soon. We don't know when, but we're not going to tell you when, but it's soon, so make sure you keep watching. Fatal 4-Way Tag Team Match. Look how long it took me to get from the last match to this match. That's how much Monday Night Raw has changed. Okay, this next match, 10 minutes, Fatal 4-Way Tag Team Matchup. The Revival defeats the B-Team, the Authors of Pain, and Gran... uh, (laughs) And the Lucha House Party with Gran Metallic at their side. And I really don't give a shit. We didn't see anybody come out to the ring other than the Authors of Piss. And then they didn't even get the win. The former champions are now out of contention. Thanks to the Revival, a team that has lost repeatedly to a couple of Mexican jumping beans. And a bunch of piñatas. And ridiculous rules. The Lucha House rules, which have been abolished tonight. Just like all the other wrestling rules that have been abolished over the last couple of weeks. Like the number one contendership. And, like, the rematch clause. And, like, writing a good fucking television show. And, like, giving a shit about excellent wrestling. Or caring about what the fans think. That's a sarcasm, in case you didn't catch it. We had Seth Rollins in the back after this fucking ridiculous match talking to Charlie Caruso. And guess who shows up? Baron Corbin, who should have been gone from the fucking building hours ago. Should have been fired by Vince McMahon at the very least. And he comes back and he's blaming Seth Rollins. You know, I was doing all right until you said something. (laughs) I'm the King Slayer. I said Barry Corbin was no good and now all of the fans hate you. That's not how it fucking worked. You suck, bro. Seth Rollins didn't do it. You did it. You can't nail a fucking promo. You shouldn't be a general manager because you're a fucking six foot seven athlete in the prime of your career, walking around talking on a microphone instead of wrestling in the fucking ring, which was supposedly your dream. Now you're just ruining Monday Night Raw on a regular basis for everybody. Fucking ridiculous. So Rollins obviously thought this was ridiculous too and just laid waste to Baron Corbin in the back, punching him in the face, leaving him in a lion heap. And I don't care. It meant nothing. You know what it means? It means next week we're going to see Seth Rollins versus Baron Corbin. Change! After this, they recap the open of the show, which Michael Cole calls iconic. This was an iconic moment in the history of Monday Night Raw. Do you know why it was iconic? Because it was probably the one millionth time we've seen the same shit. Ronda Rousey comes out. She wants to give a promo. It wasn't her best promo, if I'm being honest. She looked good. Her makeup game was all right. Her hair looked pretty sweet, if you're asking me. Nice job on the hair tonight, once again. Her hairstylist's got her game on point. The makeup team, that's a whole nother story for another day. But tonight, they weren't too bad. Ronda came out looking like a human. That's the most we could, we could ask for. 
I guess is she wants to talk about last night at TLC. She told Becky Lynch she shouldn't have her name in her mouth. She told Charlotte Flair, I'm going to write the next chapter and blah, blah, blah. But now... She's going to drop an open challenge. So, so now for the second time on the same night, we have a championship open challenge. And now we have a cutaway to the gorilla position where eight females are all clamoring at the bit for a shot at Ronda Rousey. You got Liv Morgan, the Smurf blower in the back. You got the Viking country girl, cow girl, whatever fucking girl, Sarah Logan back there. She wants a shot at Ronda Rousey. Ruby wants a shot at Ronda Rousey. The only people back there that should have been back there should have been Sasha Bailey and Natalia. Dana Brooke back there for what? Did they forget to bring the sausages into the catering room so she didn't have anything to go and blow in the back? What the fuck is Dana Brooke doing in a possible championship opportunity matchup? The same could be said for Alicia Fox. It didn't come out the way I was intending. Maybe I'm coming down with a little cold. I better not be. But it might be happening. Alicia Fox. Who fucking sucks. And you got Renee Young talking about when she was named captain of the Women's Survivor Series team, saying that she could agree with that, she could see why. What are you, fucking blind, Renee? I mean, I know you got the microphone in your ear and you gotta say whatever Vince tells you, but at some point you guys gotta take a stand. Do you know how asinine you sound? You sound like a person that knows nothing about wrestling. If you're gonna get behind Alicia Fox being the captain of anything besides the captain of the boat out of town, then you don't know what the fuck you're talking about. Ridiculous. Then they want to tell us Kevin Owens is coming back. And much like I said about Sami Zayn, they've ruined this. Instead of KO coming back and attacking the champ or making his debut on SmackDown Live, going after Daniel Bryan or an AJ Styles or doing something interesting, we're just going to see him. We're going to be told he's coming back. We're not going to be told when. And we have to keep tuning in to find out more. Fuck you, Vince. This was not new. This was not change. This was bullshit. Let's get on to this eight-woman gauntlet match. We're not going to break it down too much. We're just going to give you the straight-up results. This started out with Bailey and Alicia fucking sucks in the ring. Bailey defeats Alicia Fox. Bailey then goes on to beat Dana Brooke. So the two most useless females in this match that I did not want to see at all on a Monday Night Raw ever, not any week were eliminated fairly quickly, so I was all right with that. The action between the girls was okay, but I was just disinterested. I didn't care at this point. Mickey James comes in, and she gets to eliminate Bailey. So now we already knew Bailey wasn't going to make it, because when you're first in a gauntlet match, there's almost no likely possibility you are going to be the one to win the gauntlet match when there are six or seven others standing in your way before the end of this thing. Mickey James took care of Bailey after she gave us two pretty decent outings against the previous two. And then we would get Mickey James versus Ember Moon. And Ember Moon defeats Mickey James, which was great. And now I started to think, you know, well, maybe they'll do something interesting here. I almost forgot there's Ember Moon. We can have the possibility right now of seeing Ember Moon versus Sasha Banks. We could be seeing Ember Moon versus Ronda Rousey next week. We could be seeing Sasha Banks versus Ronda Rousey ne- next week. These are the things that are going through my head. And then, after she eliminates Mickey James, Ember Moon faces Natalia. And the rest of the show would completely go to shit. As Ember Moon, Ruby Riot. And Sasha Banks, three top talent premier females, all of which are starving for a big win, a big moment in the spotlight, and they all got pushed asunder, held down, suffocated, stifled by the WWE's agenda to to give Natalya some pity wins, to give her a sympathy storyline and put her in a shot Give her a shot and put her in a match with her bestie, Ronda fucking Rousey, next week. Natalia defeats Ember Moon, Ruby Riot, and Sasha Banks. 
<sighs> I don't know what else to say. I don't know what else to say. The show went off the fucking air with Natalia being the star. And then they wanted to hype what we are going to see next week. Finn Balor, McIntyre, and Ziggler in a triple threat match. Elias faces Bobby Lashley in a Christmas-themed street fight. Seth Rollins faces Baron Corbin. And apparently Paul Heyman is going to be around for some fucking reason to celebrate Christmas. Paul Heyman is Jewish! Just throwing that out there. What the fuck does he care about Christmas? That was Monday Night Raw tonight, you guys. This was a long and arduous fucking review. I hope that I did you guys justice and that I made you guys proud because this hammer, man, this hammer means everything to me, just like you guys do. Without you guys, the hammer swings for nobody, and that's no fun. So make sure you guys fill me in and let me know how you felt about tonight's all-new era Monday Night Raw. New era? Same old bullshit? Or has your old buddy Nick Nightmare gone off his rocker? You let me know what you think in that comment section down below. And while you're down there leaving all those little tidbits that I enjoy to read all day long from all of my loyal sledgeheads, make sure you smash that like button so that I know you enjoyed today's show and that you are going to be coming back for more. And you can do that by hitting that subscribe button right now as we continue all week long to rise higher and higher every day thanks to awesome and intelligent wrestling fans like you who don't want to be covered in sugar and shit all night long and don't want to be treated like assholes and don't want to be lied to. That's why I am here. So that you have a home that you can call your own when WWE lets you down, Sledgehammer TV is here for you. You want to become part of the brotherhood? You want to be one of our loyal brothers and sisters in the Sledgehammer Club? All you have to do is subscribe right now. If you want to support the show in other ways, you could support us by checking us out on Patreon. The Sledgehammer Wrestling Show is up on Patreon. We are in production on some very special videos that will be available through Patreon only. They are not there yet, but I need you guys to be patient with me, but you can sign up right now and get a jump on it so that you are there when those videos do go up live. All of our patrons will get special treatment and special stuff on our Patreon page, and you could check that out if you wish, if it's in the kindness of your heart to do such things, and you could donate whatever it is you like. There are a couple of tiers there right now. Nothing really that special, but we are going to get there very, very quickly as soon as you do. You could also support this show by checking out our good friends at Audible. Audible ha has books that speak to you, 180,000 plus titles. There's got to be one, at least for you, that you could grab absolutely free. You could get a free book to listen to in your earlobes because you're too fucking lazy to go out and actually pick up a book and read it by using your fingers and your eyeballs, which is okay because I do the very same thing sometimes, but the best way to do that is absolutely free. And if you want it for free, go to audibletrial.com slash sledgehammer TV right now. Sign up for the 30 day free trial, get your free audiobook. cancel before the end of the 30 days. And you still keep that book, man. You can't get a better deal than that. And if you already have an Audible subscription of your own, feel free to take this link and plaster it all over your Christmas cards as you send them out to every member of your family. Hey, as a free gift, check out my buddy Nick at the Sledgehammer Wrestling Show and he's giving away free gifts, free audiobooks, man. All you gotta do, audibletrial.com slash sledgehammer TV. Check it out. Two great ways to support the podcast right now. T-shirts, are not available at the moment, but you guys let me know if any of you missed out on the last sale and would be interested in doing another possible promotion maybe around the Royal Rumble. You know, you let me know. Maybe we can make something happen because all I'm about is making my fans happy. I'm not Vince McMahon. I don't come out at the top of this thing and lie to your ass. I keep it real and true. Because that, my friends, is what we do here on the Sledgehammer Wrestling Show. My name is Nick Nightmare. This is my team, Thor the Sledgehammer, the official Sledgehammer of the Sledgehammer Wrestling Show, and his tag team partner, the world heavyweight champion of all the microphones in all the world, Mr. Blue the Snowball, and the most important member of the team, as always, 
is you. And I want to thank you once again for being here with us today. Hopefully you subscribe, hit that like button, and share this video with each and every one of your wrestling buddies all over the wrestling world, especially if they were not taken for a fool with tonight's Monday Night Raw review i love you guys so much make sure you check out the tlc pre uh, preview and predictions are there if you want to check those out to see if i was right in any of my predictions which i mostly was but i'm not trying to say anything with that but mostly check out the review of tlc last night if you missed it it will be in the annotations up above in the upper right hand corner of your screen and make sure you are here tomorrow night as we are ready to bring the hammer down on the new era's first episode of smackdown live you don't want to miss it that my friends is going to do it and we are out of here and we will see you next time right here on your new favorite wrestling show the sledgehammer wrestling show only on sledgehammer tv